That's the sound of victory. Yeah. Karungari. Um, I've heard so many different meanings. I don't know what it means, but I think it's a, a little energetic child or straight, whatever that means, like a straight line. Miss Karun was given to me by media and fans <laughs> and Runka was also given to me by my friends. Um, Miss, I mean Karen is just my name. I say Karen. That was given to me by my teachers actually. Wow, I need to come up with my own name. <laughs> I was four years old. My parents like to play a lot of music around the house and my aunt sings. I think I saw her live. She did a musical when I was four years old and that's when I, apparently that's when I became who I am today, a musician. Kind of showed me how much I feel that I belong on this continent, which is strange because growing up I was in um, British schools and I just kind of never felt like I belonged here or there. But now it's clear that I, I want to be here. So the whole time that I was in the States, I just felt like I wanted to know more about African and Kenyan history and I just felt like, what am I doing here? Like I just wanted to come back to the continent. Wow, no one has asked me what I think of myself after being a mother because so much of motherhood is about your child, right? So what I think of myself, I think I just value myself a lot more because I have to be happy and healthy for my child. So mental health comes first. I, I don't really go anywhere that I don't want to go that people are like, oh, you need to come for this party, you know, stuff like that. So I think I'm just a lot more grounded in myself <laughs> now that I'm being a mother. Like there can be several books on motherhood, but First of all, every mother is different and every child is different. So even if you're like one mother with like five different kids, you're gonna raise them differently depending on how they are. So it's like very, I don't think anyone should ever tell any mother how to mother a child. It's, it's so broad. Like I have friends who are also artists who are also young mothers and us guys, we just like share stories and it's like, what? We're so different. Like some of us sleep in the same bed as our kids, others we can't because they won't sleep and then some of them they're kids. I approach motherhood in a, I just try to be present and learn from every moment because my son is also changing all the time. So what I thought worked yesterday is not gonna work today. So I just wanna be present and there for him. Um, I took a break from social media because it was, it was making me upset. I don't know why, I was just in a, it, I was in a space where I wasn't creating and I felt like I was being bombarded with so many different ideas just on the internet and I was low-key addicted to social media. Like I couldn't get off it and I felt like it wasn't, I wasn't in control. So I just decided to get off. I deleted all my social media apps and then a week later my phone was stolen and I was like, okay, then I guess I'm really not doing this. So I just didn't get a phone and then it ended up being like three months down the line and I'm like, Wait a minute guys, I need to push my music, I need to get back on social media. And so, now I'm back. I just talk to people who I think are inspiring, like... Or I even, I watch vlogs of people who are being very open about themselves and who also have really good art. Like Patricia Kihara also talked about how she has like self-doubt on her, on her YouTube page. And stuff like that keeps me going because I realize that, okay, so this is normal, it's not so crazy to constantly be doubting myself but I have to keep creating and I have to let my art get out to the people because once I've made it and it's finished and I, I like it in that moment but then the next moment I'll be like no I don't really like this it's crap it's horrible but like I, it's, it's my service to like put it out there anyways and like just learn from this process and do better next time. You have to understand that I've been in school this whole time. So I've been trying to just focus on either school or just like figuring out who I am. And traveling also shows you a whole different side of yourself. So it's been like a self-discovery process. So people feeling like I'm not so consistent with releasing my music. First of all, in, in that space as a student, it wasn't my business. It was, it's not like my work, it's just my passion. So I release music whenever I feel confident and whenever I feel ready to release music. Um, so I understand how people can be feeling like, oh, she doesn't, she's, she's here sometimes, she's not here sometimes. But now I'm done with school and I've made a conscious decision that this is something that I want to do for the rest of my life. So I treat my, my art and my brand like a nine to five.
Ever since um, Kamula disbanded like several years ago, I haven't done music videos. I've shot several music videos, but I haven't released them because I've been super... I wanted to be very intentional about the, the visuals that I put out there because I feel like people, human beings are very visual. Like what they see sticks with them. Even if the music sounds a specific way, the, the, the music video that comes with it is what solidifies the image of the artist in your mind, right? So I wanted to get that right. The image of Kamula is just like one aspect of me, like I've said, but um, now I'm, I feel like I'm a lot more alternative, a lot more diverse than, than how I was portrayed as Kamula. So now this time I was being very intentional with like the forest scenes, um, having more nature shots, having more, um, having more of a storyline, having the video like move from place to place instead of just performance shots to the camera. So I wanted it to be art. And so I picked um, KG Brian. He's this, uh, he, he's, we found him on Instagram. So he does like photos and videos and event photography. And his, his um, aesthetic is really minimal. And we felt like he was the right person to, to show the kind of vibe that we wanted behind roses. I don't know if there was one specific moment, but recently just talking to Ukweli a lot and we've been realizing who, who, who really appreciates our music. I mean, like, it can be hard in Kenya because the way it's worked has been just like so narrow. And so trying to be a musician, it's like people ultimately want to put you in like that, that narrow lane. Otherwise, you're not going to be successful or you're not successful. But people like Blinky Bill, Mulvaney the Drama Queen and EA Wave, they like do shows all over the like all over the planet but like in Kenya you don't have to really know them that much and I, I, that, that kind of switched something in my brain because Kamula days everyone knew me so I felt like that's what made, made that's what success meant but I didn't feel successful but now like making music where I'm targeting a specific the people who really want to hear the music and then getting the feedback from them like they really do appreciate the music and finding places where I can perform and just 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 this 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 healthy energy that, that's really changed everything for me. Mm. Stories of Outliers. Have you read the book Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell? I haven't, but I know it's, I should read it. It's You've heard about it? Yeah. Yeah, so just Outliers in general. Not, not even the book, just people who are doing things that people once thought were not possible and just like breaking boundaries in every aspect. But I like design. I like the design world a lot, like architects, stage designers, just people who are doing things in a visual way that's really cool and out of the box. All the stars, SZA and Kendrick. I followed her since the first EP she ever dropped. Yeah. I don't know. I cry a lot less these days. I don't know why. I thought I'd be one of those moms who's oh, just crying all the time. But I've, I've, la I've developed like layers of skin. Like I'm so tough. So I, I don't know the last time I've cried. But I know the last time I cried, it was a healthy cry, and I was with my mom, and we were just talking. Yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, you know what? If I wasn't a musician, I'd probably be a tattoo artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How many tattoos do you have? What? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Around seven. Seven.